you hear the waves and it's you know endless you can't even hear the other side you can't see the other side you can kind of feel the wind coming off the ocean and then yeah you just picture the vast openness of the channel Your first sports injury. Hmm. Do you remember that? Mm, was it on my knee? Nope. It had to do oh. with swimming. Oh, right. Under my eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the summer when your headache started, wasn't it? The, the doctor on call finally came in and she proceeds to say, well, your daughter has brain cancer. We, we hit a place that was lower than anybody ever could be. I mean, you know, at that point we didn't know if we were bringing Amber home at all from the city. I basically went into this dark room with, without my mom and dad and they started, you know, poking me with needles prepping me for the surgery. No one was really completely telling me what was going on because I was a nine-year-old. I don't think they knew that I was going to lose my sight at that point and I was kind of in shock and I don't really remember a lot of it. I remember my dad's eyes and <laughs> yeah there you go. <laughs> Um, the room before the surgery. In her mind, she'd lost so much at that point. She needed, we knew she needed something to, to grab onto and say, nope, I haven't lost this. And she had been such a fish before and it only made enough sense to, to get her back into the pool as quick as possible. After the operation, um, my balance was probably the biggest thing that I had to recover from. I learned how to swim again before I learned how to walk again. But I think one was crucial to the other. There's Amber. This is just the first thing of many that she was able to regain from cancer and claim back from being blind. It was, no, you, you don't get to keep this from me. It's, uh, I'm taking it back. So it, within a year, she went from being Amber swimming with the summer swim club to Amber competing in Beijing. Yeah. You know, who would have thought? <laughs> Somebody from a little population town of 6,500. Amber Thomas goes into lane five for Canada. Thomas flew down the last 100 meters. 18 years of age, she's the youngest in this final. We were in London in 2012 at the Olympic Games and she's standing there and she puts on her two medals and is holding them with this real, real pride, you know, and she said, okay, this is it, I'm gonna retire. And I'm like, what? You, you can't retire. Why would you retire? You're 18, you got two Olympic Games, you got two medals, don't you want the gold? And she says, yeah, I would love the gold, but no, this is it. And I said, okay, you retire and you have to swim the English Channel. The English Channel is the most challenging swim in open water. Back when I did it in 1985, it was one of those bad years where the water temperature was only 12 Celsius. My captain didn't want to take me out and I took a captain who said yes. Uh, somebody had just passed away a year before with him. And the tides didn't allow me in, but I kept swimming and swimming and didn't touch. And after 12 hours, I was still just swimming by the shore and I was completely disoriented and they lost me. 
I was swimming back to France. By that time, I guess once they pulled me out on the boat, I fell into hypothermia and I was at about 100 meters away from the shore. The pilot said, oh, if we could have kept you in about another 10 minutes, you would have touched the wharf, which is 600 meters out, and it would have counted. Well, our coach had this idea a while back, and she, uh, you know, talked to everybody um, that's on the team. Like, there's a couple guys in Mexico, one guy from Argentina, and Amber from Alberta. And when okay. we met up I'm in England, I go, oh, I guess it's happening. There was times in the channel where I'm like, I can't tell where the boat is, I can't tell which way is up, I can't tell where the waves are, like, I'm feeling blind and I get frustrated and the team started to pick up on that. To your right! She looked up and she said, Marianne, I need to talk to you. And suddenly it was in tears and she said, I've never felt so blind, like today. It was a little bit worrisome sometimes, you know, cause, just because um, we didn't have a guide for at first and we thought we could, you know, you know use a, like a rod to sort of steer tapper and let her know to go left or right. But that really wasn't working so well. So um, Marianne, she got in for Amber and sort of guide her in the water, swimming with her. It was tough, it was rough, the wind was blowing, the waves got big, and there was moments where I thought we weren't advancing at all. That last hour, you know, and, and swimming, and, and then just suddenly being able to say, okay, you got 1,500 meters to go. You know, and then you have 800 meters to go, where well, she could relate it to her swims in the pool, 800 meters, you know, 400 meters. And then I remember we're still like 50 meters away, she said, what is it, what is it? And then suddenly we, we were there. Happiest moments are probably when I'm going straight, or what I think is straight. Um, I feel balanced, and I just put my head down and go. And um, I can feel like what's around me, and the depth of the water around, and the height of the sky, and just being able to kind of feel everything, and your senses almost going into overdrive. <laughs> 